Animals have biographies as well as biologies. Out of the ground, the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. Naming, what is a name? According to the Collins Dictionary, a name is a term by which a person or thing is commonly and distinctively known. Why do we name? There is a hefty force embedded within the act and ritual of naming. This power can be subtle, yet can hold sway over another. In many cultures, knowing a name is to have power or influence over someone. One's name signified something fundamental about that person, their essence. Remember Moses and the burning bush. Moses wants to know God's name, but God refuses, replying, I am who I am, or I will be what I will be. For many first peoples, names may change according to life experiences. Children receive names that are descriptive, but they, their names may change as they go through life. This is also evident within the biblical tradition. Abram became Abraham, Sarai, Sarah, Jacob, Israel, Simon, Peter, and Saul, Paul. Naming is relational. We follow in the tradition of Adam by naming our feathered, furred, and finned brethren. We gift and bless them with octopus, deer, otter, dog, peacock, what associations do we bring to a name? Do some animals need to be renamed? Let's consider the example of the Tasmanian devil. In 1841, it was named Sarcophilus Harissi, Harris's flesh lover, by French naturalist Pierre Boutard. Beelzebub's pup was an early name given to it, another reference to the demonic. This association with evil continued with the name Sarcophilus Satanicus, or Satanic Flesh Lover, and Diabolus Ursinus, Bear Devil, levelled against it. In a recent article in the Australian Geographic, it was suggested that we rename the Tasmanian Devil. The name was to be Perinina, an indigenous name. So let's erase the Tasmanian Devil's link with the demonic, for it may darken and misinform our ideas about and feelings for that amazing creature as it struggles to survive facial tumour disease. We gift and bless with the name Perinia. What does it mean when a creature has not been named, when it has no name? This is the fate of many dogs raised in horrendous conditions in puppy farms. Breeding machines don't have names. In that environment, the dog is an object, not a subject. The dog has biology, which is harnessed and abused, but no name. While I was chaplain at the Lord Smith Animal Hospital, I remember encountering a beautiful but yet sad whippet. She had been admitted for treatment, but she had no name. She was used for breeding. We spoiled her while she was with us and hoped that her owner, or jailer, would not come and claim her at the end of her time. But he turned up at the 11th hour. She is forever seared on my heart. Of course, names are human labels, additions. Animals do not need our names in order to be valued and worthy of protection. But if we do not name, then it is easier for we humans to misuse, abuse, ignore. But to name does not always mean to save. Martha and Benjamin, both biblical names, were the names of the last of two species gone forever. Their names mark significant dates of extinction. Martha, the last passenger pigeon, died in the Cincinnati Zoo on the 1st of September 1914. Benjamin, the last captive thylacine, or Tasmanian tiger, died on the 7th of September 1936 at the Hobart Zoo. Threatened Species Day is held each year on this date. Major extinction events are nothing new for the planet, but species are dying out at an alarming rate thanks to humans. 
we are losing dozens of species every day. Nearly 20,000 species of plants and animals are at a high risk of extinction. A litany of names lost forever include the West African black rhinoceros, the Bubal hearty beast, the great auk, the Javan tiger, the Tacopa pupfish, the sea mink, the Caribbean monk seal, and the Pyrenean ibex. Too late for them, but not for others. It is easy to succumb to apathy because the task is so big, but it matters to each animal, named and unnamed. If we read Genesis 3, we note that non-human animals remained in the garden. They were not evicted. Only humans were. But what are we doing to their garden, their home? Pollution, habitat destruction, cruelty, factory farming. To be called or named, what are we named? Does our name inform or navigate our destiny, our calling? What are we called? Christian. Whose are we? The creators, marked or blessed by and with the fingerprints of God. Have you ever noticed the broad M shape on a tabby cat's forehead? In Islam, these streaks are said to be the marks of Muhammad, whose fingerprints left that pattern after stroking the cat. Apart from life, have animals been recipients of other gifts or blessings from God? Consider this story from the Apocrypha, from the Act of Paul, and I quote, I, Paul, went out, walking in the night. There came a great and terrible lion out of the valley. But we were praying. When I had finished praying, the beast had cast himself at my feet. I was filled with the spirit and looked upon him and said to him, Lion, what do you want? He said, I wish to be baptised. And I glorified God who had given speech to the beast and salvation to his servants. Now there was a great river in that place. I went down into it and he followed me. I myself was in fear and wonderment in that I was on the point of leading the lion like an ox and baptising him in the water. I took the lion by his mane and in the name of Jesus Christ immersed him three times. But when he came up out of the water, he shook his mane and said to me, Grace be with you. And I said to him, and likewise with you. We are related spiritually as well as physically. Animals and humans are cut from the same spiritual cloth by the same divine hand and sustained by the same love, wrote Alan and Linda Anderson. I began this sermon with a reference to the creation story in Genesis 2. Let me conclude with an observation from another creation story, one from the Cato, a small group of first peoples who inhabited parts of Northern California. Like many first peoples, they revered all creation. The Cato appear to have had a special bond with dogs. The dogs were given names, kept indoors at night, and like their human companions, buried after they died. They believed that when the creator created the world out of nothing, he had a companion with him, Dog. Dog was the creator's fellow traveller. The Cato also believed that every creature had a name and a need to be known by that particular name. Every creature has a biography as well as a biology. Every creature has a name, even if only God knows it. Let us give thanks for the diversity of creation and continue our vocation naming our brothers and sisters, saving them, protecting their environment. And if we are patient and earn their trust, we may be truly blessed by being allowed to re-enter the garden, to be their companions. In the name of Christ. Amen.